First week of podcast here. He's back for a second stint here. The man, E. Duke Bennett, the host of Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast, Tell Us the Truth Podcast. My man, what's going on? What is going on, EJ, my brother? Listen, I put on my special hat for you, okay, representing the Dallas Cowboys. It's our year. You already know what's going to happen it's here. It's been your year for, what, okay. 26 years now? 25 years? Okay. How long has been now? Okay, take it easy. But this year especially is our year, okay? So don't worry about it. Y'all, y'all keep doing it. Y'all- Man. Remember who told you first, okay? Remember who told you first. That's right. And, I, and, I, and I'll be yeah. telling you last in December, January. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> look, I got, right. y'all to go to, look, I got y'all going to the playoffs this year. So look, that's, that's, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not that crude, you know what I mean? But Okay, okay. No. Well, wait I, a second. I, who, who's your team? Who, who's I'm, your crap team? I'm a New York Giants fan, bro. Come on. Okay. Do the math. So you, Do the math, bro. All right. All right. Listen, <laughs> don't embarrass yourself any further, EJ. It's, it's okay, man. You know, basketball, wrestling, we're good. Clearly, this football thing, you don't have it together. That's okay. Well, look, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. The Giants they don't have it together either, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those fans that like to look at look at things blindly. I'm, I'm very transparent. They suck. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. suck. They do, but the Cowboys don't. So you know, it's no, all good. No, Shout no, no, out no. to Cowboys Nation. You know, no, they we don't are suck, the champions. Dude. Yep. See, thank yeah, you. They don't suck. I mean, no, I, I, I give you guys as much credit. Like, I, you didn't know me back then, but when Romo was your quarterback, Tony Romo. I was probably one of the biggest Tony Romo apologists out there, man. I mean, Romo could ball. We we can't pretend yeah. like Romo wasn't accurate, right. that he wasn't able to get it done. It's just, you know, it just didn't work out, man. It was a competitive league back then, you yeah. know? Yeah. This year, though, so, just watch. I don't know. I, I don't think they got better. That's the thing. Look, look. I think the playoff team, I, I, I unfortunately have the Eagles win the division. Oh, unfortunately. Okay. I, hate, I hate the Eagles more, more, more probably than any franchise in sports. Sure. Personally, sure. this is me. You know. Sure. I got y'all as a, as a wild card team this year. You guys are a good team. I like Dak. I think Dak is very under underappreciated. Top right. twelve quarterback in the league. That kind of thing. You know. You, you know what? We don't want you on our bandwagon. Okay. When we oh, no, no 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 we we ain't doing no bandwagon. No, that's funny. Like <laughs> on on various podcasts. We ain't no bandwagon. <laughs> no no on various podcasts. I, I get accused of being a Cowboys homer because I defend the Cowboys a lot. You know I, I, I'm not a you fan. Should. You know you should. You should. <laughs> That's the sign of of a, of a wise man. Okay, yes. that's right. Yes, how you been? Uh, last time we spoke on the sh- on this show was in May. Wow, it's been that long, huh? But uh, uh, yeah, it was in May, early May. That's crazy. You know? That's yeah. so much has happened since then. I mean, Jesus. oh my kids, you know, school started again up here. Uh, my my youngest yeah. now in kindergarten. You know, congratulations. So, yeah, congratulations. so now I got more tied up tied, time up now to do more podcasts during the day when I'm, when I'm uh, not working. You know, Great. so it's good. You know, um, Great. So we, we, we want to start, man. We got we got a lot of things we could talk about here, man. Oh but, boy, uh, you know. But let's just go. Let's go for the meat and potatoes, man. Let's let's okay, go for the so, meat and potatoes. <laughs> all right. So let's let, let's go to the, the the probably the 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 story of the year in pro wrestling. Obviously, it still is. I know we're not talking about it much right now, but you know, Vince McMahon man retiring about yep. a little over a month ago. Yep. Uh, I, I know you have some thoughts about it on your podcast. You let, you let us. The smart thing you did also, by the way. I mean, I, I know, I know, I, I know. I reacted immediately, just because. You did the smart move of waiting a little bit, let things settle a little bit, wait a couple of weeks, and then give your thoughts out as, for clarity. Um, let's start here for well, I was going to be details in a second, but just real quick, in your in your mind, you, I mean, you and I have been fans for many years. our whole lives. Yeah, we, we go on sure. um, mid late eighties, mm-hmm. Hulkamania era. Vince's legacy to you, what is it? Vincent Kennedy McMahon is the most important person in the history of pro wrestling. Without Vince, I don't know if the industry exists today. You know what I mean? I mean, it's that serious. Vincent Kennedy McMahon is the blueprint. He's the GOAT. He ha- he is responsible for saving a lot of lives through pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what you'd be doing with yourself without pro wrestling? You know what I mean? Especially WWE we'll have, in particular. We'll have, shirt. We'll have, shirt we'll have that shirt. We'll have that shirt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think, you know, the legacy of Vince is that he's the greatest. He is he is literally the god of modern pro wrestling he's the greatest to ever do it and i don't think we'll ever see anything like him ever again no we got pretenders to the throne but no, it ain't happening, ain't because, happening. I, I, because i think also too with you know for all the warts that he, obviously we've seen through the years of vince mm-hmm. the thing I, I i go back to with him is the work ethic the guy had for someone who didn't have to work as hard as he did you know, given the money he had and sure. the resources he had, sure, the dude still cared about his product. Sometimes to a detriment, 
Yep. You know what I'm saying? He yep. he may sometimes they think he cared too much, you know, to where it, where it, at times hurt the product. But you can never accuse this man for being someone who didn't care about his his uh, you know, his his company. Hundred percent. And listen, listen. We we know that Vince is not perfect. Uh, there are a lot of things that he's done that I disagree with. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. understand the concept of him having to have people kiss his ass on TV. Right. I always thought that was ridiculous. Even um, back then. Yeah, even back then. Uh, making out with all the beautiful women who were under contract. I always thought that was ridiculous. Trish Stratus and, and folks like that. I always thought that was ridiculous. That, that That's an abuse of power. Yeah. Um, I've always thought that Vince, especially early on, there's clearly a, a, a racism blind spot. With him. Oh, wow. Question. You know what I mean? Just a, a straight up, this guy doesn't get it. But I will give him credit where credit is due in this regard. He allowed himself to progress, especially as society continues to uh, progress. You know what I mean? When you look yeah, at the agree. way that women are featured today, when you look at the way that black and brown folk are featured today in WWE, it's amazing. It's like a totally different company. You know what I mean? So we got to give credit where credit's due there. But the man's not perfect, but not by any stretch of imagination. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, I'm still stunned that even with everything that came out with the Wall Street Journal report and all that, that, you know, we've seen Vince go through so many scandals and things, you know, the Star Wars scandal in 1992 and things of that nature going through the years. He still survived, you know? And sure. I, I'm, I'm still stunned that, you know this because I was I was convinced that this would be the end of him either. I thought, okay, well, they'll probably find some things here and there. But I, I Vince is is that stubborn and he's that, you know, that kind of guy that he'll find a way to get through this. Mm -hmm. So when he said he retired, I'm like, that's wow. Yeah, I, I, it, it kind of hit me a little like like a ton of bricks. Like, whoa, he's really doing this. He's really doing this, man. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was I was I was, I was very shocked when it happened. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot that we don't know. So I have my own assumption of what this is all about. Okay. You know, and, and again, this is not a fact. I'm just going by the, the evidence okay. and what I've seen in life. I think that part of the deal for Vince um, stepping down and quote unquote retiring was WWE as a company were not going to pursue charges against him which they could have done, you know, th this whole misappropriation of funds and, and creating a work environment. That's not an equal opportunity work environment. I mean, literally people sleeping around and fooling around with executives, they're getting raises and things like that. So it's not based on merit. It's literally based on what are you doing for me? You know, something for something. Um, those are, those are serious. And especially the amount of money, somebody should go to jail for that. You know what I mean? So so the fact that he was able to walk away for now, I think, was part of the deal. So in that sense, I think they put the pressure on him to leave. In addition to that, this whole Trump stuff, you know, if 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 Trump is funneling Trump, money. Hmm. Yeah, man. So they, they're, they're starting to connect dots and they're seeing that. Because I know Linda was involved in an administration. Well, that's a that. different ball game. That's a different okay. ball game. Okay. When you okay. take a look at how much money the Trump Foundation has received from Vince linda wwe i think they covered it up by just saying it was coming from vince but it was actually coming out of the wwe's ah, bank account okay. okay here we go again you got to report that a certain way especially when you're a publicly traded company yeah. so now you're getting into federal money crimes here you know what i mean so now right. you, you you have the sec and everybody else digging into your stuff so i think that there's more that's going to come out there could be a money laundering issue here especially connected to trump so Ooh. if that's the case, then he's going to be facing some serious charges here, Vince, and some serious jail time. He's going to have to flip. So he's not he's not actually out of the woods yet, in other words. No, 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 no. We're only we, we've only just begun here. There's 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 a, a major investigation happening um, by the federal government of Vince McMahon and the way that he was using WWE's funds for personal reasons and things like that, especially the money laundering, the funneling to Trump and stuff like that. That has to get sorted out. So when you're dealing with that, you don't have wow. time to be working all day, every day like he normally does, man. Just get the hell away from us so we can continue to maintain I'm, our our financial standing while you deal with your legal issues. You know, 
Because I'm not surprised. The, the, the Trump stuff's not surprising at all. Because I no, mean, with, with Linda McMahon, his wife, obviously, you know, part of administration. Him and Trump are good friends. Um, obviously, Trump has been on WWE programming through the years. Well, 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 keep in mind, EJ, Trump is a major investor in the WWE, and he has been since the '80s. So it's not just yeah. a, a, a a friendship. There's, I mean, he hold, he holds WrestleMania, WrestleMania yeah. four and five was held at Trump Plaza. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, there's there's yeah. a long standing relationship there. So him him donating money to Trump doesn't surprise me, but it's probably the, where it's coming from. Is it coming from him? It's coming from the company. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. It's very complicated, obviously, to folks, yeah. you know, but, you know, the thing is, like, you, we, you know, we do this a lot, of, a lot of times, you know, separating, you know, art artists want to call that, you know, it, you know, what is, we, we never accused Vince of being a good guy. We, I don't think if we've ever, even in the 90s, we probably knew yeah. it was a little shady, but, you know, he's getting entertainment, this and that, and it, it doesn't affect my bottom line, whatever, so whatever. But his legacy, at the end of the day, you know, and it, and this is what, I, what pissed me off the day he retired, and he had all these like soapbox, you know, SJW morons here say, "Oh, you shouldn't be supporting or praising him." Like you, you, you don't tell me how to, you don't tell me how 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 I should react to something, you know? Like, exactly. Like, that'd be a damn soapbox. You know what I mean? You can separate Vince McMahon and his impact for that company, what he's done for pro wrestling as a whole, versus the stuff on the inside that you have no idea about right now, anyway. No, so and, and that's the other thing. I mean, people are trying to conflate rape allegations and things like that. Here's what I'll say to that. Yeah. Vincent Kennedy McMahon has never been convicted of a crime, any kind yeah. of sexual assault crime, right? Does that mean he's never done something like that? No, of course not. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and say I believe or not believe, but all I know is the man's never been convicted of a crime. Right. So because of that, that means that no one's ever proven that he's ever done anything like that. Right. Now, we live in the United States of America where everyone's innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. The man has never been proven guilty of doing anything like that. So why the hell am I going to speak of him and about him as if he's done this thing? That doesn't make any sense. People are talking about the NDAs and stuff like that. Come on, guys. You think an NDA is going to talk about he sexually assaulted so and so and all this other stuff? Come on, right. guys. Yeah. Give me a break. Thanks. You know what I mean? And at this point, whatever he paid anybody, if that were to happen, they'd make more money right now. They could breach that M NDA and sell their story and make more money doing it. Right. So, so we know that that's not the case. You know what I mean? Use common sense. So, for all you humanoids out there that <laughs> are just looking for blood, because in reality, you just have some kind of issue where. Because Vince McMahon has always put business first and he's not pushing your favorite flippy dippy peanut butter skippy wrestler <laughs> because he's not doing it. You know, your your your, your latest indie darling or what have yeah. you. You want this man to suffer for that. Here's the reality. You're just not that important. You know what I mean? You super fan, me super fan. We're just not that important. The casual fan yeah. who's going to bring their whole family to the events and who's going to spend hundreds upon hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars, okay? That's mm. who they're trying to draw. They're trying to bring in the kids, so get to the next generation of, of uh, super fan. It's not us anymore, and you have to accept that. We're not that important. That's it, you know? People and their feelings. Yeah. That word, that word feelings, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. who cares? And, like, I don't – your feelings don't matter, dude. <laughs> you you, get, you have a choice. You can, you can stop watching. Sure. But it's you know they can't they can't stop watching because stop they it. love it. And that's the yeah. worst part about it. They don't want to admit that they love it because it's not cool. Although now that Triple H is there, they're finding their way in out. Oh, well, it's Triple H now. So yeah, it's cool again. It's like, come on. It's pretty right. much the same product. That, don't that, don't start that, this. That, 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 that's a good <laughs> that's a nice segue because that's the you next know? they're getting to. Because uh yeah. Triple H is now the head of creative now. You've you've been very vocal about Triple H and you know in the onset. Yep. You did you did give him some praise though um on your, on your last episodes of uh, uh Duke Loves Wrestling. Of course, any podcast catcher, check it out. Um you call it Triple H new Coke. <laughs> That's what he is. That's what he is. <laughs> well, explain, to my list. Explain, explain to my list of what the hell new Coke is. Yeah, you 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 young folks don't know. You know, Coca-Cola, we call it Coca-Cola Classic now because years ago they came up, it was over 20 years ago. They came yeah, up about this, 1990, 1995, yeah. Some, yeah. somewhere around then, right? They came up with this new and improved Coca-Cola, and they called it New Coke. You know, it had it had <laughs> fancier packaging, and it had great marketing. And I'm telling you, it was going to revolutionize soft drinks. But here's the problem. It looked good. 
it smelled good. It just didn't taste as good as the original Coca-Cola Classic. Okay, so they had to get rid of new Coke altogether, bring back Classic, because nothing beats the original. So, look, Triple H, I take nothing away from this guy. He has a lot of experience as a wrestler. He's been learning on the job as an executive through the years. You know, it, it, it pays to get in with the boss and then marry the boss's daughter. And I wish him success. And I think he's in a position where he's surrounded by people who will help make him successful. But the man has failed as a manager of a wrestling product with NXT. It did not draw money. So, NXT, so, uh, so this, this, I don't understand though. NXT, that's just the thing I think I was, I'm not going to say I pushed back on that because I, I was not watching NXT when it first started. I got into NXT literally when I came back in 2019. And I, even then, it took me a couple months to get into it because I was not, you know, it was still developmental. And then mm -hmm. it, it was becoming. The, you know, not Raw SmackDown important, but was at that time when I started watching it was become more important and it, it put on great shows. Sure. But why you say it, you say it was a failure or it, it didn't profit? But mm -hmm. can I argue that a lot of it too is because of, of the structure of the it wasn't really supposed to really. I don't know how you, how you, how you say this, like because NXT is, it was a development brand. The point of that brand was to develop talent to bring them up to the high, to a higher standard to, to a to, to 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 the main roster obviously so isn't it by default that it's not really a, something that was supposed to really be i don't say profitable but on at least more in, in comparison to raw smackdown on the margins like that like is, is that kind of unfair and you know, i'm trying to say to, to say that it was a, a not a failure but it, it didn't profit no it's not unfair and here's why okay because Vince McMahon wanted it to be a developmental uh, show and concept. Triple right. H wanted it to be a third brand, and that's what he started calling it, right? All the investor calls, all the media, what have you, he was calling it a third brand. He, he refused to call it developmental. So they also took it on the road and started selling tickets, right? They had their own pay-per-views and all this other nonsense here. So he tried to make money off of it. The problem was it just didn't work, you but, know. But you, but would you would you couldn't you argue that NXT has a ceiling by default? Because let's say no. you 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 create said star, no, you don't have said star once in a while. Because if, if said star is developed ready to go, let's say hy hypothetically, okay, for, for example, a Bailey, Sasha Banks, or you know Roman Reigns, you know they're gone as soon as that star is developed, they're off the roster because they're going up to the main roster at that point. So can I argue that it's kind of unfair to call it? that because there's a purpose to nxt those guys who are there aren't there to last forever you're, you're Ross, conflating Mac two different things though okay you have the vince mcmahon nxt and then you have the triple h nxt so what, what, what you're when describing hunter take over? when did hunter take over actually he always he he had it from the beginning okay okay nxt was developed to give him his own promotion so he can learn how to run a wrestling promotion that was the right. whole concept right and they got sick and tired of looking at these indie kids who were terrible with the flippy dippy peanut butter skippy. So they wanted to in house train people on how to wrestle the WWE way and right. develop them that way. That was the point, right? So that's why they got rid of FCW and they got rid of OVW and all that other stuff. They wanted to do it Triple H's way. Right. So we got to understand something, though. He wanted it to be its own brand. And that's what he promoted it as. So once you do that, I'm gonna hold you accountable for what you're but doing. But could it? But could it not be that because if Vince is saying no, and Vince Ultra is the is the judge and jury executioner, that if it's if Vince is not, it won't be his own brand, unless unless you're saying that Vince gave him the green light to make his own brand. Of course, it, of course he did. You think okay, Triple H okay, can okay. say that? So here's here's a problem. Now yeah. we get into a legal issue here. Okay, you can't tell me as an investor mm -hmm. on an investment call that this is a third brand if it's not you know okay. what i'm saying okay i'm okay. because now we're tying into that may affect whether or not i put more money into your company right so we can't do that you know so they definitely were treating it as a third brand but See, here's again, what I'm, vince did right but, so, so, so i'm asking you because remember i limped in this thing much later like nxt exists in 2011 10 11, whatever it was i limped in eight years later and sure. when i limped in in 2019 I was told it was, a, while it was developmental at one point, 
that it was being treated like a, like a third brand. Like the yellow brand was a third brand. It was a red brand. It was a blue brand. It was now a yellow brand. Yep. So that's why I'm asking you, who's been watching a lot, you know, in the, in the at least in the last twelve years, long than than I I have been anyway. What exactly was the parameters and what and whatnot? So this is this is why I'm I'm asking these questions to see. No, you you took a, you sense took now. a break. You took a break, which is, is well a long break. We, yeah, you sure did. Yeah. So I so it, it's understandable. Right. They put too much money into this thing, and it okay. got to the point where Vince was like, "Look, we're losing money." You know what I mean? I can't keep pumping money six, seven, eight years later. I can't keep okay. pumping money into this thing. So we need to we need to make some money off of this. So we're going to put it on TV. Was so, it a mistake to put it on TV? Hell no. You know why? Why? Because it's profitable. <laughs> yeah, it's easy That's money. It. That's it. You're printing you money. Know? They're making yeah. well. They're not printing money off it. They're making between twenty and thirty million dollars a year off NXT. But what I'm saying is that US. I've always said this to like a person between WWE and AEW. Mm -hmm. AEW needs TBS and, and Turner. Sure. Okay. Sure. WWE does not need does not need USA no. Network. Okay. No. USA Network needs WWE. Mm -hmm. they're, they're always their highest rated shows every single week, no yep. matter what, on yep. their platform. So yep. continue. Go ahead. Yep. So so it's making money which justifies why you can do what you do with it. You know what I mean? Triple H mm -hmm. never wanted that to happen. He wanted to keep it his baby that he was christening. He wanted original stars to stay there like the Undisputed Era. You know what I mean? He wanted to keep it a certain way. Gargano and, and Chiampa, they were supposed to stay there. Did you, did you like that the, 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 uh, old guard? Well, I guess I'll call it the old guard now. I love that era, NXT. No. Did you like that era? No. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay. Because they suck the life out of the damn thing. You know, I got a problem with the product that's not diverse enough. And what okay. I mean by that is when I okay. turn on wrestling, I need to see every race. I need to see every nationality. I need to see genders. I need to see variety. There's mm -hmm. something about Triple H, which is a blind spot for him. He's enamored by these vanilla midgets. And I, I speculate. Adam Cole. Yeah, Organo. all these, okay. these undersized guys who, who, quite frankly, when you look at Chiampa, right? Put Chiampa next to Roman Reigns. Put him next to almost. Put put him next to Bobby yeah. Lashley. It's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, you know what I mean. This is a lightweight. This guy shouldn't be in here wrestling with the heavyweight. So, so my point is, Triple H, I think he wants this thing mm -hmm. to do well, but not so well that it overshadows anything he did, and that's why he likes to go. And develop these small time, you know, ROH style guys. It's like right. these are not superstars. Don't can I argue? Can I can I know? argue? Can I argue though that part also? And I'm not saying your, your point is actually valid. I actually tend to agree with what you're saying there. But can I argue also too also that while the blind spot may exist, that a lot of it too also the fact that maybe he's trying to feed that audience that because Vince is not an independent guy. This, Vince likes who he likes. Vince yep. is an old school. He likes his yep. big guys, Hogan's, Roman's, yep. Stina's. You've seen it. Come on now. He, and it works. Like, it works. It, it works. It, it has worked for 40 years. Yes. It mo mostly worked. Sometimes it hasn't worked, but mostly has worked. Can I argue that Triple H is trying to feed another audience that likes the, would you say, Flippy Dippy, Peanut Butter Skippy audience? Yeah, but that audience is so small. They're a niche within a niche. And, right. and you've seen it with AEW. Right. They can't sustain a large scale promotion long term. And here's the problem with that audience, too. And AEW mm -hmm. is a great example. Yeah. Angsty white males within that age group, 18 to 49, what mm -hmm. do they do? They drive everybody else away. I'm not saying all, I'm talking about a very specific type of fan. Right. They drive everybody else away. You don't see a lot of women, you don't see a lot of people of color, you don't see a lot of kids, you don't see a lot of elderly. They drive everyone away because they are so members only. This is you our mean, thing. You mean the audience, in other words? I'm talking about the audience. I'm talking right, about okay. the audience that that people like AEW cultivate, and even you know to a certain degree what Triple H is cultivating to a certain degree. Right. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't break my neck to go tap into that audience because here's what we know: diversity sells. If you have women, you're going to make more money. If you have kids, you're going to make more money. If the whole family can go to family friendly entertainment, you're going to make more money. So, of course, whole... and, and, and on my wrestling podcast, we discussed this in the past too about how, like, you know, we are okay. So, my co host, Mike, for example, is mm -hmm. he has three kids. I have two kids. We, when we go to a WWE show, 
it's a family event. My wife That's right. goes. That's my right. My two kids goes. His That's wife right. goes. His three kids go. AEW, it's just me and him. Members only. Maybe the wife. Because well, not only that, the product is not appropriate for kids. I don't let my son my, my son Eli, nine years old, loves wrestling, loves WWE, loves John Cena, obviously. I don't allow him to watch AEW, not because it's not a good product, because it's not served for him. It, it's too much cussing involved, it's bloody, it's very much a niche for a certain audience. Yeah. Which is why AEW is only is only reached what it's reached in terms of numbers. Yep. Yep. And and why they don't get the same type of ad revenue as the right. WWE gets. Because who are you marketing to? Yeah, exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? So exactly. I think Triple H checks and balances. He needs somebody there to kind of rein him in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And make sure that he's not making mistakes that are going to be long-term lasting, um, well, you know, stuff. Like you can't put the belt on Ciampa, let's say, or, or well, Johnny Gargano. That doesn't will, make any sense. I will say this much, though. Like Vince was the 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 first, last, the only when it came to decision-making anyway. Sure. I mean, obviously, I had advisors, but ultimately sure. Vince is the gatekeeper. But he was right. Most of the time. I'm going to say all the time, but most of the time he was right. Um at least for Triple H, though, there is still the Stephanie. Well, see, I don't the, know. Nick Khan. I, Triple H is in charge of the wrestling. I agree, but you don't think that Stephanie and Nick Khan has some input about certain things? In ter- I mean, I'm, you get, I, I, I think Triple H is in charge of the wrestling. If he's if he's managing talent relations and he's managing um, creative, then he's in charge of the wrestling. Okay. So I think for a certain period of time, they're, which they should do, by the way. I don't mm-hmm. disagree with this. This is the way that you manage. You have to allow your, your lower manager space to either sink or swim. Yeah. So that means you give them a quarter and you see what happens. You know what I mean? And then you review it. You give them another quarter. After you, after you review the first quarter that they're in charge, you say, okay, here are your results. Here's where we want to see improvement. Now you give them another quarter. Fix it. Right. And if you don't see improvement in the next quarter, then you say, "Okay, we're going to have to strip some of your duties here. This isn't working. And you give them a final opportunity to turn the ship around. And then after that, then that's it. You got to replace them. Okay, so like when you were critical of Triple H and call him New Coke, that was literally the first week or two when things started out, when Vince retired and it was announced about a week later that Hunter would be the uh, head of creative. He's still New Coke. He's still New (laughs) Coke. (laughs) Wow. You don't think to ask you. So do you. Yeah. You've been you, you know you were praiseworthy of some of the things you've seen. You've been like you like some of the things sure. you've done so far. Sure. You, give me some positives. What what are the positives you like so far? Positive. Well, the belt is still on Bianca, which is very yeah. important to me. Oh, she's fantastic. Because I I think that like Roman Reigns, it's gonna take a little bit longer for her to find her her stride. You can't you can't give up on that. You gotta you gotta stay with it, keep feeding her. She's gonna oh, get there. Oh, and we argue- saw it in that match with Becky that she has it in her. She actually is working her ass off. Although, kind of, and I, I, actually, you know, I can argue that she'd be great to, as a heel too. To be honest with you, absolutely, absolutely. She was an NXT. She did a absolutely. fantastic job as a heel. Yeah. But yeah. I do like that they've kind of, made, I mean, probably the Becky feud did this. There was a point I think where she got a little like a little bit annoying with the whole like over dramatics and stuff. Once in the ring, once in a while, I get it. It's part of the act, but it, it got a little annoying in a while. That's kind of gone away a little bit now. Now she's a little more yep. super, a little more edgier. You can still yep. be, a, you can still be a face and be edgy. Hell, Hulk Hogan did it <laughs> for a long time. It's true. It's true. Kevin Nash as a as a, as a face, and yep. I think Bianca figured it out that you don't you don't have to be a, a total baby face to be over. You can be a little edgy and still be a face. You know what not? I think the Becky feud going to SummerSlam did that for her. So I I, I, I agree with you also with, with with Bianca being the uh the still holding the belt. That, that was the right yeah. move. But they, what they else? Gotta, you like a, they got to stick with that. I yes. like that women are still either opening the show or closing the show. I think yeah, that's last, very last important. Night. Right? I think yeah. that's very important. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that Lashley is still being built mm-hmm. because at any point he could be champion again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's very important. You have to keep a couple of guys hot enough so that at any point you can plug them in. And I kind of feel like maybe for the first time in a very long time, I'm not saying Vince didn't care. Because Vince did care in moments, but it felt it feels like the last year or so that they don't give a shit about the U.S. title or the IC no. title. Yeah. I feel like it, I feel like it matters again now with Triple H actually, which is a good thing because those things are used to build to build stars. Agre- how do you think how, how do you think this guy here became a champion? Right yeah. Here? Well, both of yeah. you guys might matter. Macho and yeah. Warrior. Yeah. They were IC champs first. You're right. 
and that set the stage for him to be world champs later on. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, 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 that, and I remember saying this on, on the tape three podcast, you know, one of the things I wanted Hunter to do was make those belts matter again, man. Yeah. Yeah. Make them matter. Yeah. Cause they used, they used to matter a lot. You're there were right. times, that, there were times where the IC feuds back in the day were more, actually more, not important, those are the, but they were more. Those are the better wrestling that, matches. No, but only that, but even the feuds themselves though. Yeah. Even the feuds themselves were actually more interesting than the world title feuds. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I mean, Hunter's doing doing well there. So give me some negatives now. Obviously, obviously, he's still new Coke. So what 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 is the new Coke about him right now? Still six weeks in. Well, I think that there's too much of an emphasis on NXT people. Yeah, yeah. Too much of an emphasis. Hmm. I feel like he's missing the mark with almost in particular. I okay. don't understand talk, talk, why almost wait, isn't wait. factored in more. Please go, go ahead. No, no. I want to. I, I, what exactly? Because my thing. I, I, he's a big dude. He he has a place there. Use him, but he's he's still really green. He like to me. He's like Jay Cargill green. <laughs> almost. Okay, but how is he going to get better? He should be a bodyguard still. They should, I, I, I think they push him too quick. Honestly, I don't think he's, so. They they, they think... say use they say use like a Kevin Nash. They use Kevin Nash ninety two. Bodyguard, build him up slowly. Take time, take a time with him. No need to rush yeah, him. Yeah, but but almost was a bodyguard for a year, and then he and then he was an entire team with AJ. I mean, it's been his build over. The, it's been about two years now, right? Yeah. So how long are you supposed to? No, you, this guy needs to start winning some major matches. He needs to be featured. He needs to be put in the world title picture immediately. The okay? problem with that is he's not. The thing, the problem, the reason. While I agree with you in theory, he's just not good enough. You don't think that guy in Roman Reigns, you don't think that would be box office? Box office? Right now, no. Not right okay. now. Okay. And maybe okay. and, and, and if, if it goes somewhere, it's because of Roman, obviously. Because Roman sure. is Roman is the one. He'll get you there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But no, I, I don't disagree with you about pushing almost and making him more important. I, I, I don't agree with that. But when I watch him in ring, I'm rooting for the guy. Mm-hmm. I'm rooting for the guy. But I just don't. I still see, you know, he looks really green still. That's okay. That's okay. You know, you got to get him there. You got yeah. your job is to get him there, and he's not going to get there sitting on the sidelines. Right. Right. So I want him on TV every week. No, you know, that I agree. With you. The more repetitions, the better. You're yeah. only going to get better, right? I agree with you. There. What else you don't, you don't like? What that's kind of still a new. Coat. The long matches. I think the long matches is a mistake. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. I, I give times, 20, yeah. yeah, embarrassing. I give TK. I, hey, look, I'm, I'm consistent. I told Tony Khan all the time, cut the shit by five minutes. You have a good, better, better product. Yep. You have space. Use it. Uh, same with Hunter. A little, a little too long. I, I, in fact, a couple, couple of my guys are saying the same thing too. A little, sometimes a little too long, but you know. But I yeah. think Hunter also wants to emphasize more wrestling too, especially. And you've seen that because a lot of times there's a lot of squashes on Raw and, and SmackDown. Sure, sure. So I, I understand that, but you know, you, you can cut back on that. I agree with you on that one. There's a way to get it done. There's a way to get it done. The the, the last thing, which I think is probably mm-hmm. the most important thing, right? He's taking credit for things that clearly were in place before him. You know what I mean? Right. I, I think you know WWE was doing very, very well. You look at their stock. Mm-hmm. You look at um, the ratings have always been strong. Yes, people are tuning in now because it's unpredictable. They don't know who's going to show up this time. Everyone was expecting Naomi and Sasha to show up last night, which is why they watched. Mm-hmm. Because the dirt sheets start, you know, they, they make up their lies. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Whatever. Um but you got to give Vince McMahon credit for what he put. Th- whatever foundation he built to get us to this point, right. especially this year, mm-hmm. you got to keep giving that credit. You know what I mean? You're you're coasting off of what somebody else's work right oh, now. Oh, no doubt. And, no and you're doubt. just adding a couple of – I mean, Johnny Gargano is not going to move the needle. I don't give a damn what anybody says. But I do think Johnny Gargano you know? could also move the needle for someone in, in the U.S. title picture or in the IC. This is what I'm saying. These guys may not be world title guys – Mm-hmm. In your opinion, but they can matter in the IC title, matter in the US title, and that's the thing. I, I get it, I totally get it. You know, if Johnny but... Gargano ever wins the IC title, I'm turning the TV off. Really? Okay. This guy is is he has no what, what, business. What, what, you're a short guy. What's your what's your problem with short people, man? <laughs> well, and, and that's a good question. That's a, and you're absolutely right. But so, so here's the thing: I don't watch wrestling to see myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pro wrestling is supposed to be real life superheroes. It's supposed to be a spectacle. What happened to the spectacle in wrestling? 
Triple H and Tony Khan, they don't understand the concept of spectacle. I want bright lights. I want big muscles. Hello. I want the most attractive people that ever existed in, in on the planet. I want spectacle. I don't need to look at me and you out there. I want to see some. I want to see Bobby Lashley. Bobby yeah, Lashley. I'm a big guy, man. I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's right. Show the gun. Show the beef. There. No, I'm Show five eight. Bro. I'm five eight. You know? <laughs> you know? But Bobby Lashley is is who I see when I look in the mirror. Yeah. The rest yeah. of the world may not see that, right? But but when I think of if I could be anybody, I want to be Bobby Lashley. So I don't want to see myself. I don't want to see Johnny Gargano or, or Ciampa. Like those guys look like me. What the hell am I looking at them for? So okay, so like I see a point, and I, I think the place for many different f- people, but different styles of people, styles of wrestling, sure, and all that in, sure. in the company. And any wrestling. The bottom company. of the card for those guys, though. Bottom of the card. I mean, Shawn yeah. Michaels was a small, short, smaller guy. He did it. He's already he considered though? a great. I mean, he, he was, was six feet. Well, he's well, he's bigger in comparison to the guys today. Sure, <laughs> obviously, but sure. he was he was still a six foot two twenty. But that's my cutoff. That's my cutoff. I right. feel like if you're if you're under six feet, unless you're you're the one person who can do it, Ray Mysterio, Brian Danielson. We only need one on each brand. We don't need a whole bunch of them. You know what I mean? There's one. Right, so you, your problem is, 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 is the amount of the amount the, the amount yeah. of company. This is a okay, triple H being in love with the Indies, playing patty cake. It's embarrassing. Well, it to me, really it's also about, well, to me, it's about selling. Could, could guys that small that could they sell that? Like Randy Savage is not a big guy, necessarily a big guy either. Sure, you know. Could, but of course, we're talking about in comparison to where he played. He was he was what Gar- what Gargano would be today to that era. You know. Okay. Back then okay. It was. Back then, the average size was 270, 280, 6'4. Yep. Randy yep. Savage was 235 and 6'2. Yep. You yep. know what I'm saying? So, but as, as you're just saying, like, there is a place for that kind of style, too, also. Like, I know you have your, your beef with Flippy Dippy, Pretty Member Skippy. You know, fl- fl- I do too. I do think my issue with it is more so the excessiveness of it. Yes. I like seeing that stuff. I don't need every match to be that way, too. Are you every match design? has a dive. Every match has a stand on the outside and flip out of the ring onto people. It every gets match. old in a while. Yeah, it gets old. It's and, ridiculous. And, and AEW abuses more than anybody else. That's all they know because they can't wrestle. Yeah. That's all they know. You I know? like storytelling. I like storytelling yeah. at the end of the day. And that, yeah. that, what brought me to the dance was storytelling. Yeah. That's why, and I was talking about my buddy Big Jim this yesterday. That's why I still to this day, even, even, you know, even, for all the great matches SummerSlam had this year, I love Roman and Brock because there was a great story to be told, not just leading up to the match, but in the match. Yeah. Roman, dude, Roman Reigns, you know, has become is become more and more underrated now as, as you get through this era because he's not what you consider a great technical wrestler, but he tells a fantastic story in the ring. And he's a big match guy. And Everything he does, he does a big match. And he yeah. does the little things right. Yeah. That's why Hulk yeah. was so over back then, because Hulk wasn't a great wrestler. But he does the little things right, yep. and that matters yep. ultimately to selling to folks. Yep, you're absolutely right. You're so, absolutely right. Um, you also have been very critical. Well, w- 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 real quick, uh, what do you think about these name changes now? Um, apparently, Hunter is going back to uh, giving these guys their their original names and X. So Riddle's back to Matt Riddle again. Uh, apparently, mm-hmm. um, there was another one that got his name changed. Also, oh, Theory is back to Austin Theory, which I agree with the record. I agree that she they should actually. Have it, Matt Riddle, and instead of Riddle, and you know, I, I never, I hate, I hate it when they made it Champa. This is his full fucking name. Look at this shit. Just leave him alone. I know Vince has it reasonably did. Do you like that? Do you, I do you care? Less. Okay, I okay, less. okay. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about the name. <laughs> I don't. I don't care about you saying belt or title. I don't care about any like some of these fans. They they're so fixated on these little yeah. nonsensical things, and it's like, what the hell does that really have to do? Uh, to you in terms of whether or not you're going to watch the product. Because here's the point. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why they were doing that. And right. I'm sure it had to do with making money. Yeah, of course. At the end of the day, that's it. It's a it's a, it's a a business decision. Right. So we can crap on it all we want because we don't understand it. But I don't think Vince McMahon is just like, I don't like people who have uh, a first and last name. I don't think that's what it was. I think there was some market research. I think it had something to do with, with, with that. And it's like it's easier to say riddle, riddle. No one's saying Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle. You know what I mean? So when we start talking about the marketing aspect of these characters, right? It probably has more to do with that than anything else. 
But did you, you know? enjoy the uh, the pre-show riddle Seth Rollins stuff? I loved it. I'm not a riddle guy. You um, know, I'm 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 just there's something about the guy I just can't stand to the oh. point where I don't even like watching him. It's not even like I want to see him get. I do want to see him get beat up at times, like when Lashley's slapping him around. I love that, but I just don't like the guy. Um, do, you, do, you, I, do you like do you like RK bro at least with, 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 with Orton? I wasn't a fan of it. I wasn't a fan of it, not because of Randy, but because of Riddle. There's just, you know, I'm a I'm an energy guy, and I'm very in tune with that. And there was just certain people in the world where it's like, nope. And Riddle is one of those people. <laughs> it's just, it's instant. Okay. It's no fucking way. That guy mm -mm, ain't okay. happening. Okay, you know I what it. I mean? There's okay, something okay. about that guy that's dark, and I'm allergic to it. So. Okay. Mix, uh, yeah, definitely an opinion. Yeah. I, I get that. All right, so okay, back to what I was gonna say. Now, um, you've been very, very critical. You did an entire episode on this actually oh. on Dulas Rast and check it out, of course, on all podcast catchers. AW, you have been on the fucking neck of Tony Khan from day one, yep. consistent. And this is the thing I always give you: you're consistent every time. And if you see good, you'll praise the good. But you're yep. consistent from day one, and that's why I respect you. Now. You're seeing a lot, a lot of stuff coming out in the dirt sheets. A lot of things, some true, some maybe not be true. Who knows? But if there's that many leaks, clearly there's something going on. Well, here's my question to you, EJ. Go ahead. Doesn't it all sound very familiar? What everybody else is starting to finally say now? Mm -hmm. Of course. It's starting to sound very familiar. It's yeah, starting to sound like what I've been saying all along. Yeah. You know what I mean? The so, uh, go ahead. Well, well, the women. Only being featured in one match Still? per episode. Still. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? So so now people are starting to complain about that. Sunny Kiss not being featured on TV. Mm -hmm. Now people are starting to complain about no black or brown male singles wrestlers being featured as top contenders to the AEW championship. Mm -hmm. Now people are start the, the the key demo. Oh, it was so important, so important. So why the hell is Dave Meltzer? Yeah, yeah eight, 1839 white males. Now Dave Meltzer is starting to say, I don't think they're going to get a deal from Warner Brothers Discovery. I wonder why. So if the key demo is so important, why wouldn't they get a deal from Warner Brothers Discovery? Oh, right. because it's not important. Because that, that whole fan base that you had been trying to cultivate all this time, you failed. It never made sense. You drove everybody else away. And now you ceiling. can't market your product. You cannot market your product to anybody else because you drove everybody else away. That's the reality. But hey, I've been saying that since day one. Yep, you have. And and, I, and not only have I been saying it, and I said it to Tony directly too when he jumped in my inbox like a like a moron. Um, I I gave him the path. Just start delivering on the things that you said you would. That's it. Feature more women, pay them equally, feature more black and brown wrestlers, especially in the men's singles division. Right. You know, give them an opportunity to make as much money as their white peers. Like, do these things. LGBTQ plus, be serious about and here, that. And here's, the thing that and here's the thing that bothers me about Tony Khan now today, is that when we when I was on your podcast last November, remember I was telling you, you know, I agree with you, but let's give it another year and see what you... Sure, you, you give it time. Out. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. And here's why. Oh, I wonder in, why. <laughs> in, in, in the case of women, for example, the reason why it was, in my opinion, at least at the first, it was a little justified, was the women on the roster weren't that good. Okay. Britt Baker's, Britt Baker's, okay, Britt Baker is yeah, she's worse. but she's, she's not that great a wrestler. I'm yeah, sorry, she's, she's not. Worse. Yeah. Here's the issue I have. Here's the issue I have now with Tony Khan. Your rosters improve drastically on talent in the last year and a half. What's the excuse now? There you is have no. Tony Storm. You yeah. have you have. Uh, uh, I know you're not a big fan of hers. Um, Ruby Soho. Uh, you have guys. You, you have women in the roster that actually are good. Athena. You have. Women on that roster now in the last year you've added that, that could justify you doing at least two matches a, sh a dynamite. You're not doing it. That's the issue. I had a problem two years ago because the women on the roster back then were not that good anyway. So I understand that. That's not the issue now in 2022. What's well, the issue the, now? Here, here's the deal, though. Even if they weren't that good, who's responsible for making them good? Like, that's your job. Right. To get these folks trained up or get them out of here and get the right people in there. But like you said, they did bring in some fresh faces, some experienced faces coming off of WWE TV. Yeah. And they that division still can't catch a break. And I'm telling you right now, it's because Tony Khan does not respect women enough to, to treat them the way that they deserve. He's a treated. fucking fanboy. That's why. He's a yeah. fucking fanboy. Yeah. And his he, mind, he, 
a white guy is pro wrestling. And that's it. And that's all you see at the top of his card. Those are the people making the most money. It's a fact. A white he's, guy he's is made, pro wrestling. He's made minimal improvements to that. Obviously, tag team champions is a swerve in the glory. Well, but, but, but that's but, not a minimal right. improvement. The first tag right. team champions minimal, had I'm a black saying. guy. You know right, what I mean? And, and where every black person that's ever held the AEW tag team championship, where are they at on the card today? All of them. Where are they? Are any of them competing for the AEW World Championship? And by the way, he, I know he's he's done. He's invested on Jay Cargo, but she needs to be the world title champion now, not not the fucking TNT, TBS or whatever the hell TNT Women's Champion anymore. Even with Jade Cargo, here's a person who legitimately had no business being in the ring at that right. point because but she's she, a danger to herself and everybody with her. Right. And every match that you see of hers, she gets worse. Yeah. That Anna J match, it was a race to the bottom to see who was going to be the worst wrestler on the planet. And I think. I think Anna Jay actually did a better job of being the worst wrestler in that match than Jade Cargill. Anna Jay is, is abysmal. You talk mm. about a bad wrestler. She might be the worst wrestler I've ever seen in my life. Okay, Ooh, for somebody worst, who's worst been in that Morgan? company. What's that? Well, Liv worst, Morgan's worst. pretty terrible. But but Anna Jay is <laughs> far worse. She's far worse than Liv Morgan. She's far worse than Jade. And I didn't believe it because Anna's been there all this time. And she's not. she's clearly not working on her craft. And it's embarrassing. You know what I mean? Right. Last episode, you were saying it was basically titled "AEW is it a unsafe work environment." I'm going. To, I'm going to answer it for you now. It's yes. It was. And I was saying yes even before this stuff came out because we they, we were seeing things. Yep. 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 On TV that were yep. like, "Whoa, what are you doing?" Like the whole stuff with Sammy and Matt Hardy and the yeah. concussions, shit like that. Like, what are you doing? Like, no, no, read the room, buddy. You know, and yes, they're on work environment. To, to answer your question in your podcast, um, detail real quick what you, what you were saying in your podcast about why you believe it's an unsafe work environment. Well, it's not that I was saying I believe it is. I was asking the question. What do you think it Based is, Based on, on the reports. Is, right? What's that? You think it is, though. Come on. I think it is. I, I, I think I'll it say is. This. I'll, straight I'll, up, I think it is. I'll say this. I don't believe AEW could be safe with Tony Khan being the president, right. if he's in charge, because this guy has such a lack of regard for so many people. And I'm not saying that as if I know him. I don't know him. I'm saying that based on the quality of his work. Right. Okay. I'm literally taking a look at what's going on. And I say that because I'm in contact with enough people in that company to know what the hell's going on too. Yeah. So we can't discount that. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I don't think it's safe. And I think it could be a hell of a lot safer of course. Uh, if you had, if you had people actually managing the place. Yeah. Right. But Eddie Kingston folding Sammy Guevara, right? He folded him. He hit him so hard that he folded him. Well, who the hell deserves to get beat up at work? I don't care how much of a scumbag Sammy Guevara is. Nobody deserves to get beat up at work. And then the report of Thunder Rosa hiding in a bathroom because Britt Baker and uh, Jamie Hayter are, are, are looking to jump her. Is Look, this true? Is that story true? No. That's, that, listen, Thunder Rosa is a trained MMA fighter. She doesn't have to hide from anybody. Right. Um, and I'm pretty sure she could beat both of their asses uh, in, in pretty quick time. Right. So I don't think she was hiding from them or afraid of them. But that doesn't mean that they weren't cussing and looking for her and trying to right. stir stuff up. And maybe she was maybe she understands that because Tony Khan is such a poor manager and because <laughs> he has a relationship with Britt Baker, a, a, a friendship. I don't know. Is she giving him free teeth cleanings and Novocaine? I don't know what the hell's going on, but maybe. Thunder Rosa recognizes that if she beats the hell out of those women, she might lose her job because Tony Khan has proven that he's not going to side with any woman in that company over Britt Baker. They've complained about that woman over and over again, the bullying and the, and the ridiculous tactics that she's used. Mm -hmm. And I got people that'll go on the record if Tony wants to challenge me on that. Right. So they've complained to him about it and he's pushed them all away in favor of Britt. So we know that there's a management issue there. So was 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 Thunder Rosa avoiding conflict because she knows she couldn't win in regard to maintaining her her position in that company? Possibly, you know, but that's not working conditions that are safe for anybody. Who, would have, who the hell wants to work under those conditions where you might have to beat the hell out of somebody because you, you don't know what's going on here and you, you can't trust them? Right. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just the whole place is just a, a circus. There are people complaining about the party atmosphere. It's like mm -hmm. Animal House. You know, just a lot of stuff. Tony, people are people are making fun of the guy, including elected officials that I know down in Florida uh, who say that the man shows up. He looks like he's been partying all night. 
you know, just we call, crazy we call, stuff. We, we, we call him Cocaine Tony on our, on our, on our podcast. On, uh, so on so think about that. You're not the only <laughs> everyone. Everyone says Tony Khan and, and Cocaine in the same sentence all the time. Are you telling me that's a coincidence? I don't know. I don't know if the guy's doing cocaine, but I, and if he is, I hope he gets some help. All I'm saying is when you take a look at what's going on, the way he manages things, the way that he interacts with people, the way that he picks fav- favorites and what have you, this guy is, is just a disaster. I would have fired him if I was in charge of anything he was working under me. And I say that as a person who's been in management for over 20 years, I would have fired that guy right. because he can't even be retrained. He's so bad at what he does. You just, you got to get rid of him. Start from scratch. Unfortunately, he has fuck you money. That's a, that's what saves his ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that being said, um, and another another thing you've been discussing on your podcast recently, and you had a mutual friend, Rob Bonnet, Rob Genius on the, on your podcast, uh, recently talking about you know women's wrestling, you know, in terms of like how many matches here and there. Lately, you guys been talking about the T- the TV deal coming up next yep. year for for yep. AEW. That's up yep. next uh, August, right? Well, so here's the deal: their contract runs through December. December of, of 2023, but okay. the network right. has a one year option that they can pick up, which would take them to December of 2024. Okay, so something that, has to give at some point soon, is the main point. So, obviously, you've seen Warner make some changes, of course. Yeah, yeah. lots of things coming out about the, the latest thing I saw was that they want them to turn tone down the language. That's the yeah, rumor. I mean, Who's that coming from, though? You know Who what knows? I mean. I mean, I, I said think, that. I know said that, but I, I don't. I don't trust any of that stuff that comes out because it doesn't make sense. It's not consistent with what we see, right? You know what I mean. AEW has always. You got to remember what is their TV rating? Nine hundred thousand to a million. That's the, that's 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 that, that's the sweet spot. But, it's been well, like, well, since... well, what I mean by that is what is what is their TV rating in terms of? Aren't they uh, 14, 14. fourteen? Yeah. Okay. So they can swear. I don't know where this comes from, where they got to tone down the language. They're a TV 14 product. They can swear. So, and they're, they're not hitting the limit anytime soon. You know what I mean? In terms of that, here's right. the reality. You got people in charge who are cutting money. They need to get rid of $3 billion yes. before next year. Right. And they're going to be able to use what they cut as tax uh, breaks. So they're going to, they're going to make some money off of that to, to, pay down their debt aew is not delivering and they're not consistent with the type of programming that zasloff and his team put a premium on those guys love reality tv Mm -hmm. because it's cheap to make and it has high returns your 90 day fiance your your stuck in the woods shows your your hgtv programming they love that stuff you know what i mean you don't have to pay a lot of money you can put it on all year round. You're going to have a lot of spinoffs. And the best part, it's family friendly. So you can get the top advertisers to spend money on it. It's a win win for everybody. AEW right. is not that. They are only delivering on a very small population of people. And even then, that population is dwindling for them because the, the, the quality of their product, it just. It's just not good. So they 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 yeah. they found a sweet spot the last couple of years, uh, especially with the NXT when NXT left uh there was a nice slot. They, they their, their sweet spot obviously is between eight fifty and a million. That's okay. their sweet spot. But okay. but again, they're not growing their audience. That's the problem. They're not growing the audience. Like they want to. See, I, I'm sure Turner and Warner want, want to see growth yeah. at some point, and you're not getting that. But as we said earlier in this podcast, that they have an audience. They're sticking to the audience. The problem is though that audience is not an audience that you can grow with. Because at no. some point they drive people away, as you said. Yeah. And, and that audience is going to go to something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the other problem. That's why you constantly have to innovate and cultivate because of that reason. And you know? that's the genius of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. He yep. understood that. Yep. You knew when yep. to change, when to pivot. He wasn't that's sitting there the just trying to market to us. He was right. constantly going to the younger people. Constantly. That's the way it is. You know? And everyone yeah. talks about the attitude. Or the attitude ever didn't make money. I'm sorry, it didn't. It was popular, but it make money though. But it didn't make money. You know why? Well, what do you because mean? Because you money? could only market to a small percentage of people. Well, the, 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 the thing was with that era though too is that at that time that kind of programming was in in sure. 98, 99, 2000. But it but, didn't make money. But Vince knew when to cut it off. Vince knew when to pivot. It didn't make money. There's a difference between what they were making in the whole Hogan era 
and what they were making in the Austin era. Austin sold shirts and made money that way. The company didn't make as much money as they're making now or as they were making during the Hogan era. And I'm talking, but, but you know, I, adjusted but, for inflation. But and all can that. I argue that because of where they were in the mid 90s, about to go bankrupt the whole nine, and then as the era came, obviously, obviously, drastically improved. But you couldn't get you couldn't got any worse. Any worse you go, you're bankrupt. Can you argue that that change financially, even for like a short term? I'm listen. I'm not saying it shouldn't have happened. I'm just saying that there's a reason why they don't haven't brought it back since. You know what I mean? When, when mm-hmm. you start getting Eminem, Mars, and you start getting you know the major car companies, you start getting Walt Disney World, you start yeah. getting those type of advertisers. Your product better be family friendly. It's as simple yeah. as that. You know what I well, mean? And there's a reason why AEW doesn't have that stuff. Well, I, I always, I, well, I always said anyway that what Vince did in '97, '98, '99, 2000 was a hail mary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think he wanted to do that. I think he's looking at okay. Well, I got BWCW in the ratings and this and that, and, and I, this is all I have my in my bag. So let's go. But for as it. soon as he saw an opportunity. He to make some it. real money, he got the Goodbye. hell out of that, and he never yep. turned back. Went back and to the Hogan. Went, back. Went, went back to the Hogan thing with John Cena. Yeah, and he never turned back. So yep. that's the irony of that, where it's yep. like, look, absolutely, it's a business, guys. Nobody cares about your Dave Meltzer seven star match or any kind of nonsense <laughs> like that. Like Kevin Nash said, how much did you draw? How much money did you? Thank make? you. You know Boy, what his, I mean? His, his podcast. I told, I told you this on text uh, a couple weeks ago. His podcast is fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, um, Nash is cool. Love his Nash podcast. Cool. Um, that yeah. being said, so we talked about the DVD deal with AEW. Do you think um, Warner renews? No, twelve months. AEW Rampage and Dynamite will be canceled within twelve months. Or, or, or let me let me preface that. Rampage definitely. They will be told that their services are no longer needed. They may be allowed to finish out their contract. Opt in one more year. They they'll well no they're not going to get the opt in. I don't okay. think Warner Bros. Discovery is going to keep them uh, for 2024, but they may be able to last till 2023 throughout and finish out the contract. But where? Okay, so if that happens, someone will take them, obviously, because no. that's that's nearly a million viewers no. a week you're going to get. No. no. Do you think AW will be finished at that point? No. Here, here's the problem. They need money. They've spent too much money. They need a way to recoup the money. They do not have a path to recoup the money outside of a TV deal that's going to pay them at least $100 million per year. There was so, a company out there that would do that. You think? Who the hell would pay them $100 million for that product? You know, they're getting paid on average about $43 million. I think that's in the end, that's what it is. And people don't realize their contract is for three hours of programming. So that's Rampage. So, and Rampage, Dynam- it, okay. so Rampage is not bringing in any extra money in that oh, regard. That was always part of the contract. So people are saying, well, Rampage is going to get canceled. Well, the contract is for three hours of programming. So Rampage can get canceled, but they're still going to have to owe the network another hour of programming. So, the, so what I'm hearing from you here on this podcast is that we are seeing the beginning of not just of it's them over. on TV, of them as it's a company. Over. It's over. Because because here's here's what here's what's going to happen. Shad Khan, people don't realize this. Daddy. Tony, Tony Khan Daddy. does not owe that comp- own that company. Tony does not own it. Dad Shad does. Khan owns the company. Shad Khan is not going to continue to to maintain a company that's failing to the degree as AEW, especially if they can't land a, a TV deal that's going to give them at least double what they're making now. There's no path to get out of debt. He's going to have to put that company in bankruptcy, and he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Wow. I feel bad for all those wrestlers, especially people that I have, you know, good rapport with. But I'm telling you right now, it's the beginning of the end. You know, Tony Khan has been restructuring contracts. And a lot of people are not picking up on this. All they know is that he's restructuring contracts. Well, here's what he's doing. He's giving people more money, but he's not giving them more years. So on one end, you say, well, that's great. If you give me more money, that means that I can negotiate my next contract from a higher rate, right? So if I was only making $250,000 and you just increased my contract to a half a million, that means when we negotiate the next go around, I'm gonna be negotiating from a half a million, which means I'm gonna be asking for more than that. So that's great. But it's not so great if you don't have a TV deal around the corner. Right. So I think what he's doing 
in his own roundabout way of trying to be a good guy, he's padding people's pockets because they're probably not going to have a job pretty soon. You know, and that's the reality of it. I mean, he's a well-intentioned. Uh, I mean, the, the, the signs that you see here is he's a very well-intentioned guy. Seems yeah, I, I mean, he's everybody. Listen, the worst B- person on the planet the side, I'm does saying. something B- nice for somebody. The worst I mean, person he, on the planet does something for somebody. So I, I mean, don't. Paid, I don't think everyone's all bad. I mean, he paid. He paid his guys through through the pandemic. We didn't have to. Whatever that means. Whatever I mean, that means. Didn't have to. I mean. Whatever that guy's off but, the but, then he, but then he also got rid of a guy who who had the audacity to question why he said what he said about Big Swole. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. You know I'm what saying, I mean? No, I, I, I get what you're saying. So, um, and it's funny because like, to my next thing here on AW, CM Punk, huh. he was the guy that many believe would be the one that would put them over the top in terms of, okay, if. AEW gets to one and a half million viewers a week. Mm-hmm. CM Punk is the inflection point of that. He start he he deb- debuted on the programming l- uh, what, a little over a year ago, last week a year ago. We don't call that. Uh, one year in, um, I missed the podcast last week, I, but because I had, had a topic to do this, but I graded him a B minus because I thought he had a initially a really good run early. I thought his feud MGF was fantastic, and then the last three months it was gone to shit. Um, so one year in, because obviously CM Punk has not cha- moved the needle at all. It's, it hasn't. It has gotten worse, but it hasn't it's gotten slow. better. It's, it's gotten worse. And, and, but, but the thing is, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. In my opinion, yeah. so it doesn't matter. So even though the number numbers haven't changed dramatically at all, so CM Punk one year in AW, what kind of grade are you giving it? I give him a D. Wow, God, you you, you judge hard. <laughs> and and I, I'm going to tell you why I give him a D. And I and, and Punk, I hope you're listening. Um, Come I on, know Phil. That- Anything I'm on, the, these guys, they share it and angry listen. So, yeah. Punk, I hope you're listening. You don't respect pro wrestling enough to get your body in proper shape. You don't respect pro wrestling enough to work on your craft. Every match that you have, you look abysmal. You look mm-hmm. like a person who's never wrestled before, which is really scary, quite frankly. Um, and on top of that, you talk like a guy who – has some type of cachet where he can talk down on other people. Meanwhile, your quality of work stinks. So I just think that CM Punk should have been there to put the younger guys over. And he shouldn't be wrestling much. He should only be wrestling, you know, maybe once or twice a quarter. And everything else is just him building up to put a young guy over. The fact that he needs to be champion. You know, this guy said during a press conference, I'm not depressed anymore because I'm champion. It's like, let me tell you something. If I could have jumped through that damn TV and, and just took his mic away, I would have done it. That was one of the most embarrassing things I've ever heard in my shit. life. Because what you're revealing to everyone is that you're every bit the selfish bastard that we assume you are, right? You got to be the top guy. And if you're not the top guy, then you're upset. Well, what a, what a low life. And that's the thing, too, also, I, I was saying, I, first of all, I, I disagree with the booking on him getting a title anyway. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, I mean, he doesn't need a title. He's that big. He doesn't need a title. It's ridiculous. But the fact, the fact in his head he needs the title, it, it's it's sad. You know, and now what you've done now is, is stunt a, 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 you know, a growth of a guy like Adam Page, who was on a roll, got the title in November because Kenny Omega, was on a roll, and you basically stunted that. You basically just cr- crushed that momentum. And now he's hurt. He can't wrestle. They have this dumb, dumbest shit interim championship thing. But wait, wait, dumbest idea, Tony Khan. Okay, and, and you're still doing it with but with, with, with Tony Rosa too. Have her relinquish the title when she's back. Just throw in the picture. How hard That's is it. that? Seriously. How hard is that? How hard? Like is seriously. That? And, and and by the way, also your rankings, dumb idea too. Hate the rankings. It's stupid. You, number one, you don't, you don't even fucking follow it. To begin with, you don't even follow it. So, but yeah. You, it's sad with CM Punk, like like everything that people assumed. And and granted, remember, I I, I didn't watch CM Punk in real time when he was yeah, on that's, the true. That's I, true. I I knew who he was, and I heard about him, and I heard the stories in in hindsight. Now you, I'm seeing it. Like what they're saying is probably true. You are an asshole. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. yeah, and I I, I don't get. It. I I gave I gave him a B minus only because I thought his first nine months was fantastic. And then once, 
after the MJF feud, which I thought was a fantastic feud for the record, went to shit. I've never seen the guy have a good match since he's been back. Like not even solid long. match, but he's he's had solid matches. But all he it, does it, is botch. No, but all I love his botch. Oh, he's he's great. He's great at he's great at, on the mic. He's also obviously the 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 feud's been really good. The feud the, the building to the feud's been really good. So and that matters to me obviously too. I don't expect him to be a fucking five star wrestler anyway. I don't. I, I never did. I mean, especially at his age. But he 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 kept me interested in, in the feuds up until they decided to give him the title. Then yeah, I was I was, I was off the. It's off embarrassing. The it's embarrassing, mm-hmm. and, and he's linked up with the other Cryberry Crybabies, the revival. Um, you know, I don't of, know what FDR? happened to those guys. All they do is cry. All they do is complain. Not a fan of FTR, huh? Well, it's not that I'm not a fan of them. I think they're a great, they're great tag team. Oh, they're great I tag think, team. I think their quality of work is 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 top notch. Yeah. But I think that they're too busy complaining, as opposed to focusing on business. And I think that that's a mistake on their part. And and it's the CM Punk effect. It's the Bret Hart effect. You notice how these miserable complaining bastards, they find a way to 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 come together so mm-hmm. they can just commiserate all day long. Yeah. And it's like, look, you guys get more than everybody else. Even the little bit that you get is still more than everybody else. What the hell are you complaining about? I will say this much though. You talk about an act that, that, that goes back to WWE in the next year or two. FTR is back in back with the uh, WWE. To do what? Complain more, probably, but you know they're. You know they're, what I mean? It's like they're, they're, their stock is pretty high now. They'll say that now. I mean, if, it, if there's any bright spot now <laughs> in AEW right now, if there's any bright spot in AEW right now, it is FTR. I don't know. I don't know. I think they get exposed. You go back to the WWE, you get exposed. You know, I think I think these guys are just. They want to be the top guys, and if they're not the top guys, they got a problem. Right. And I understand a desire to want to be the best, and I understand a desire where you feel like you're being picked over, but it has to be true. Do you know? Do you know he looks good in the end of all this right now? Is Cody? Of course, of course. <laughs> Cody Rose looks so good. Smartest in the man in the room. Smartest yeah. man in the room. New one to get yeah. out. New one to get out. Yep. I think he's. I think he saw trouble brewing. He's like, let me get the fuck out of here. Well, I think right. it was deeper than that. I think he. I think he. He saw. He probably spoke to somebody at the network. Yeah. I don't even yeah. think that it was a wrestling thing. I think he spoke to somebody at the network, and they were like, "You know what I'm saying?" And Cody well, was like, "Right." Well, given the fact that he also had a TV show there too, yeah, they had the access to that. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it had a lot to do with that. And it was like, "Look, I'm the last person that's going to get a big contract," and that's it. Because guess what? You don't got to pay those AEW people any money if you want to bring them into WWE. Mm-hmm. You don't got to pay them anything. Who the hell is right. going to pay? Who, who's the competition? You know what I mean? So, so you're going to notice that the contracts are going to go down because mm-hmm. Tony Khan effed up. He couldn't get it done. So now the, the industry is going to go back to having some tough time. I think the wrestling industry is in a recession right now. You know, look how many people are putting up GoFundMe. I saw a wrestler the other day. Their car broke down. Now, they're signed to a major company, and they're on really? TV. Their car broke down, and they're putting up a GoFundMe. And I'm not saying that to, to, to knock anybody, but I'm just telling you, the economics ain't adding up here. Clearly, there's something wrong with the with the money that's coming in. Can I ask you what, know it was? what I mean? Can I ask what I'll, was? I'll, I'll tell you offline. I'm not going to put uh, okay. the person out like that because I, okay. I don't have a – I'm not saying this to be negative about the person. Of course. No, I, no, no, no. I totally get that. The industry itself is not in good shape. I think the WWE is in great shape. I think but, Wild but Superheroes smart people. is in great shape. Well, yeah, but I don't. I think wrestling is in – in listen, you got these folks who are – making indie shots and they're barely getting paid fifty dollars an indie shot they're spending more money on gas than they are getting paid to wrestle yeah and that's the majority of them okay if you're getting a hundred dollars working a show you're a big deal what does that mean yeah because a hundred dollars is nothing today but what does that mean for the house that means no one's drawing nope if you got a hundred fans that's considered a good house right that's not good (laughs) nice segue Nice yeah. segue. We're gonna get a little politics now because inflation and all that. Uh, you you obviously do talk politics quite a bit, um, which is why I love having you on here because I, I love your perspective on the world at large. Um, last time we spoke, I think did did the Roe v Roe v Wade leak happen at the time? The leak. Which leak? The leak of the uh, the them basically ending it. The leak at first, and then of course that. 
Well, anyway, it doesn't matter at this point because because they, they ended it. They, it it's, it's done, <laughs> obviously. Yep. Um, obviously the, the, the gun violence stuff too as well. In recent months, uh, you know, when we last spoke in May, I said to you that you know November was, was going to be a shit show for Democrats. Yep, that it was going to be a fucking shit show. That it was going to be a bloodbath, like a bloodbath like nineteen ninety four was for Democrats. Um, now we're starting to see some signs of life here. You know, love him, hate Joe Biden. Whether you're his politics or not, I'm not saying you, but people in general, he's had a lot of wins the last couple weeks. Okay, mm-hmm. some of these, like, the Roe v. Wade thing, has definitely hit a nerve. Like, I mean, they, the, the, the abortion law in Kansas, one of the most conservative places in the whole, whole country, not with it. You know, the gun shit is an issue, obviously. The, you know, the, the gun violence and, and gun, gun control, gun reform, what to mm-hmm. call it. Mm-hmm. So now you, you start to see a little bit of like life for Democrats here. I, I've always said. Democrats don't do well in midterms because most of the voters don't necessarily are engaged politically anyway around midterms because they don't even understand who the who they didn't know who the fucking senator is or or, or the representative so they don't it's even true. know they're not engaged it's true. They, yeah. they, they they think that the an elections every four years when arguably the midterms are probably more important than the presidential presidential election because because yep. the midterms sets the stage for the president who was in, in charge and I always said for years that Democrats only do well midterms when there's actual chaos or something to battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2018, it, it did well because it was Donald Trump they're facing. So you want to weaken Donald Trump. Years past, they needed chaos, something, some event to get them to the polls. The gun shit, Roe v. Wade, you know, all this stuff could be a sign for Democrats. I, I, I'm not a Democrat. I'm just talking as as politics of sport here, if you will. I still think Republicans do well at the ballot box, but I'm, I'm a little more curious how the midterms are going to look for Democrats as we get into November. What's your, what's your thoughts on the political climate right now and, and as we get into the fall? I think that whether you call yourself a Democrat um, but your policy says otherwise, I think mm-hmm. that we're seeing a, a strong shift to the middle for everybody. I don't think it's a one way or another way. I think that those that are able to, depending on where you're at, do you know what I mean? You have red states, you have blue states, depending mm-hmm. on where you're at, whether you're listen, Charlie Baker, who's a governor of Massachusetts, mm-hmm. is a Republican. Right? And, and, also, and, and are we the most liberal state in the whole country? Well, this is the point. A, a, a Massachusetts Republican is not the same as a Republican in friggin' Florida. Right. You know what I mean? It's a big difference there. So I yeah. think I think what you're seeing is a lot of people are changing their language. Democrats are starting to sound a hell of a lot more like Republicans. And Republicans, to a certain degree, are starting to sound the hell either. It's either one or two extremes. They're either coming closer to the middle or they're all the way. They're so far right that you can't even see them anymore. You know, yeah. Bobert and some of these other folks here with, with some of the crazy rhetoric she's, that they have. Going on. On. Well, this, but this is the point. So I, right. I think that. Look, Joe Biden is probably going to go down as one of the worst presidents we've ever had. Um, that's just the reality of it. You know, Joe doesn't have it in him to do the right thing. Um, it doesn't matter how many wins we're getting right now in the short term. In the long term, overall, this has been a failure of a presidency. It's just a fact. Right. Now, one could argue that there was so, such a mess to clean up. That's probably why. And that's okay to take that argument. But I think our country is going through a transition. And what we're going to find is somebody younger, somebody more centrist, and somebody who's not afraid to tell both sides to go to hell, they're going to emerge out of this because neither party has their stuff together right now. The question neither is who? one of them. The question is who? Who? Well, that's who, which party who, is going to present? Whoever that? it is, whoever it is, right? They're not a high-profile elected official right now. Whoever Pe- it is, people across the board, Republican, Democrat, no matter where you, what, what, whatever leaning you are, they have lost faith in the government. Yeah, across the board. You know, what you're seeing here, and you, and you made a great point there, and I said this a couple weeks ago, you're seeing a realignment now, yep. politically speaking. Yep. A lot of people going to the center, but the center is different. It feels different now because the center has been redefined a little bit now. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, the, a, lot of, a lot of the, that's why I always say Florida is a weird state because people consider this Florida a red state, but on policy, they're pretty darn liberal. Yeah. We just we just we just voted in minimum wage by a wide margin 
last year. That's a progressive, that's a progressive leaning there. You know, we are on the verge of becoming recreational marijuana here. That's a progressive policy position there. And yet, locally, and certainly the governorship, we haven't had a Democratic governor in 21 years now. Wow. Lawton Charles, Lawton Charles was the last one before wow. Jeb Bush took over. Charlie Chris was running against DeSantis. At the time, was Republican when he was, when he was governor. Of course, Rick Scott, and then now DeSantis. Hmm. We, but so, what I what what I get out of that is this: the problem necessarily isn't about Republican Democrat. Well, well, it, it is. The problem isn't necessarily about it. It, it is politics. I think the Democratic Party has lost yeah. its voice in the state. Yeah, yeah. They become more lead more elitist. They, they've lost the middle class. Not every Trump voter is a bad person. Hmm. Not every Trump voter, like, you know, a, the, 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 the whole Obama Trump voter thing, that's a real thing. Yep. I know many people personally in my life that voted for Obama twice and voted for Trump, either of these two elections, 2016, 2020. It's because the Democratic Party as a whole has lost its way, it's yep. lost. Division. It's, yep. it's law. They used to be part of the middle class, party of the of, 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 of the of, of the normal people, common sense people. Not so much anymore. No. Complete opposite now. Complete opposite. And but I, I think we're gonna see it. We're gonna see it. And we're gonna see it leading up into the next presidential election. So these midterms are gonna be what they are. You watch, man. Somebody's gonna emerge and it's gonna be somebody we didn't see coming, and they're gonna be the one that's gonna drive this thing where I'm not saying that the two-party system is going to go away, but a lot is going to change in the next couple of years. What do you think of the uh, Andrew Yang's four party? This guy's a joke. You don't like him either? I, I think he's a he's a phony. I support him I, initially, the UBI thing, but uh, yeah, he, he the more I, I, the more I see him and I, and I listen to him, yeah. like, he, he's like a clown, dude. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a phony. I, I, I never liked the guy. Um, I think he's full of crap, so it can't be him. But, you know, it can't be Cory Booker. It can't be any of these other – it's going to be somebody we didn't see coming. Is there anyone on your radar that you've been following that you feel like that could Absolute. possibly – Absolutely. There's, there's, a couple of, there's, there's a couple of women, man, that are going to surprise some people. I feel like uh, the, the door's open for a lot of different things going forward. Like, like I said, mm -hmm. realignment creates a lot of opportunity for, for a lot of things here. Like, I, I'm, I'm – like – I, I, look, if I'm, a, if I'm a Democrat right now, Joe Biden can't run again in 2022, 2024. Can't. No. I mean, you got to find run. a way to get out of that. Yeah. The question is yeah. who, who are you putting up? You ain't putting up Kamala. Kamala is, is, is a joke, too, my, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, who, she, who, 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 who are you putting up? It's a good question. It's a good question. There's not, yep. not a lot of questions to answer here. Yeah. It's a good so. question. Anyway, yeah. that was a great pod today, man. Yes, sir. As always. Pl Plug your stuff, man. Plug what we got going on, man. You got what's your next? What's your next episode coming out? Your next, uh, well, both the podcasts. Yeah, obviously we talk about Duke Lost Wrestling, but you also have another another podcast called Tell Us the Truth that you, yep. you know, tell tell us the truth. The next episode will be out next week. We actually have some uh, interesting things uh, coming down the pike because of the midterms. Now every every elected official, every former elected official, every pundit wants to come on. In fact, <laughs> where, where is it? I don't know if let me let me hold this up here. This is myth, this my myth, plug, the myth of uh, American inequality here. Written by who? So Phil Graham, who's a former senator, okay, um, big name guy and what have you. He's going to be the next guest on the show, and he's a Republican, so he's going to be talking about inequality from his perspective and what have you, and and some facts and figures that he has. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, we don't necessarily agree. So um, it's not going to get contentious, but it is going to be an interesting conversation. So tell us the truth. You know, I, I talk to people from all over the world about issues facing people today, especially people from marginalized communities or mm -hmm. people who want to address issues that affect marginalized communities. So definitely uh, check us out. You know, that's a show that I have in partnership with iHeartRadio. Tell mm -hmm. us the truth. You can hear it on all major podcast platforms. And then Duke Loves Wrestling, my, my pro wrestling show, which is mostly an interview show. But every now and then I like to slide in my opinion on what's going on lately. I already told you. because I went, I went. There was a period a couple months ago I went to your back catalog of things. I, I do love the solo pods you do. Like the one you did recently. 
do more of those, man. Seriously. You know, you know what it is, man? There was a period where that's all I was doing. And I think it burnt people out a little bit because everyone's saying the same stuff, just a different way. So yeah, but but your but again, your voice a little bit different from everybody else's. You're not you're, you're I want to consider Duke Duke Bennett a generic voice. Duke Bennett has a little more perspective on things and look at things at a different angle than most other wrestling podcasts. So I appreciate that. Let's take, and, let's and take that right to heart. What I'm saying to you, man. You know what I mean? No, you're right. Heart. You're right. I, I may have to do a little bit more of the monologues at least, even if or, it's an interview episode. Or at, at least throw like a 10 minute thing, you know, like, yep. you know, quick little quick recap of the week and this and that. What do you think about that and all that? Because oh, that's, that's, you know? that's fair. That's fair. And, and fair. here's the thing. A lot's going to keep going on because we're going into the sweeps. Yeah. This is a time of year where everyone's going to be throwing out their best programming. So, yeah. you know, because they're competing with eyes in the NFL, who's going to kick everybody's ass? We know that. Yeah. So how are you going to counter program the NFL? This is actually a time of year where I normally lay back on rest. Well, I, I, I've been kind of laid back on wrestling as as anyway recently, but between September through Survivor Series, yeah, I don't get jacked up against a Royal Rumble time. Then I, once Royal Rumble comes around, then I get jacked up again. Mania season around the corner, but again, I am a football diehard. I got, I got so, a football podcast so this is the too. time. This is the time to bring on, bring back Bray Wyatt. This is the time to bring Sasha and Naomi. This is the yeah. time to start doing those. Will that happen? Anything? That's, that's going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah, of course it will. Yeah. They have nowhere else to go. So, right. simple as that. You yeah. know, there there was an opportunity for Sasha to go to Wild Superheroes, okay. and at the last moment that got pulled. I can say that now because it's not going to happen. Right. There was an opportunity for that to happen, and everyone, all parties involved, including the WWE, because they were allowing it to happen. Okay, all parties involved were okay. And then it was decided that wasn't going to happen. And I think it was decided it wasn't going to happen because Triple H and Stephanie and Nick Khan assumed all power. Yeah. So that brought up new possibilities. So, yeah. you know, I don't, but Sasha and Naomi, they're not and going I, anywhere. And I think also, too, as you said in this podcast today, reading the room, yep. AEW, might be, AEW might not be a viable option for anybody anymore. No. like no. I think people are going to look at AEW and like, eh, don't we want to go there? No one what's going yeah. on. TV yeah. deal might be up very soon. I eh, don't know. So... People, people better start calling Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe he'll be your new Tony Khan. Who knows? You know, this, like this guy that. says he says he has funding for the next three years. Freddie Prince, so he might he might have enough money to bring in a couple of big names. Okay, okay. you know, and Conrad Thompson, he just passed papers to create his own promotion. So, you know, that might be a possibility. I don't know if that's going to be a full scale promotion or if it's just going to be tied into Starcast, so that he doesn't have to depend on AEW. But that's another sign that AEW is failing. If Conrad starts his own promotion, mm-hmm. he doesn't have to use AEW anymore with StarCast. Right, it's true. So it's true. everybody, the tea leaves, man. Everybody's seeing what's happening here, and it ain't looking good for Tony and the boys there. No, I'm with you. I mean, no. Everything you said tonight, today makes total sense. So, again, do, do, do this rest of the podcast, of course. Uh, tell us the truth. Dude, I love talking to you, man. We'll do it again soon. Like I'm talking about like with next month. So be yes, ready sir. for that. Yes, so, sir. Appreciate you, Good job as always, man. Thank you, brother.